We're gonna get started. Just give me a hi. <coughs> Excuse me. Good afternoon, starting a couple minutes late here. I wanna give everyone a chance to sign in, set up the recording. <coughs> and I need to get some water, excuse me. Okay, great, thank you, Kathy. If you have questions, plop them in the room. I can see everyone's writing. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can earn a living day trading. And again, you can day trade, you can do options, you can, you can do whatever works for your schedule. Okay, so for me, I look to focus on the morning period. And as far as earning $250,000 a year, you can earn way more than that trading. It's just about your risk. If you have a higher risk, you will earn more money. <coughs> Excuse me, if you have a lower risk, then you will earn less than $250,000 a year. You're looking for one-to-one. -one. I think the problem is with a lot of traders is they are not consistent with their risk and they're not consistent with the strategy that they use to trade. So therefore, they never get to this elevated level of wins and profits, whether it's week over week, month over month, or year over year. So I think if you're someone that's been looking to trade or you've been thinking about trading or you're trading right now and you're not seeing these types of profits or even being profitable at all month over month over month, then you need to consider if the strategy you're using is working or if it only sometimes works. Sometimes anything works, even crap ideas. You know what I'm saying? Like people bought GME a year ago or whenever that was, February, January, 2021, and, it, and they made money. People, some people made a lot of money. It wasn't a good trade. It hasn't worked ever since. So, you know, sometimes anything works. It doesn't mean it consistently works. So for me, what I do is I get up in the morning and I'll look at the gap. We're going to talk about gaps. That's what this lecture is going to be about today. That is a strategy that I focus on. And again, that's how you can be consistent and then you take the risk, you set the risk, you use the same risk on every trade, be consistent with it, and you can be profitable. Again, not only to earn $250,000 a year, but way, way more. I have a woman that recently signed up for the Gap Options newsletter with me. She's gonna, she already emailed me today, she's gonna pay for the subscription for the year in two weeks. Could be this week. She's, she's making money. So it's, it's about getting good trade ideas too. And if you don't know how to find those ideas or look for those ideas or spot those ideas, then it's gonna be difficult for you to be consistent. Again, consistency is the key to earning a living day trading. And if you've been somebody that's been doing this part time, that's fine too. I mean, some people are back to work normal. <coughs> Excuse me, some people are working from home. Personally, I like the fact that I can work from home. But you know, a lot of people have gone back to the office. And if that's something that you're doing, you can do options where you can put the trade on and you don't have to babysit and watch it in the morning. But for the day trades, for the active live trading room, you do have to be available between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time to take the trades. The options, you can put the trade on, buy it, and then put an immediate sell order, which is a cancel day order to get you out. For the day trade room, you have to be live. Uh, the options trades, I'm just doing the weeklies, and we'll go over a couple in here too, okay? So everything I do is based on the strategy, which is uh, the golden gap, and we'll talk about that today. Anyways, if you're interested in more information, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. I do recognize some of you here. I think some of you have been following me for a very long time, um, and I'm not sure why you haven't joined. I realize that people um, are trading and they're back and forth, but ultimately you've got to try to get somewhere with this. And the only way to do that is to really make money. Uh, I think one of the reasons that I was successful at the start was that I was very driven and very motivated to in fact make a lot of money. That was my number one driver and talking about trading for a living, I didn't like my mortgage job. I was doing mortgages. It was back when the mortgage industry was collapsing. 2007, 2008, and I was determined to find a different career. And I really wanted to find a different career where I could have an unlimited income, similar to when I was doing mortgages. But again, all of that fell apart when banks didn't want to lend money to people. So that's how I started out. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype, you can do that as well. And again, you can email me questions or feel free to give me a call. So let's talk about results. Results count. You've got to have results if you're doing this. This does not mean that every trade that I do works, although I will say that 2022 has been a particularly good start to the year. Why? Number one, the trades have been there. Number two, I've spotted the trades very well. 
And number three, I've been extremely focused so far this year. So, you know, we're at a period now where earnings season started. It actually officially started on Friday. Today is the second day. Monday, the market was closed for Martin Luther King Day yesterday. We did Goldman Sachs today. That was our play of the day. We shorted it and we did the SPY. So again, you know, having more winners and losers is how you're going to be able to pay yourself at the end of the week and the end of the month. I don't think it matters when you pay yourself as long as you pay yourself. Now, if you're someone that starts out with a very small trading account and you don't want to take money out at the beginning, you want to build the account up, that's okay too. Your risk has to be the same for every trade you take, like I said, and based on the size of your cash account. But again, if you're having more winners than losers, you are going to be able to make it. And I think patience is important as well, especially if you don't have a lot of money to start. Because if you're someone that has a small account, you really cannot afford to lose. The difference between someone with a large trading account and a small trading account is what? A small, a, a, someone with a large trading account can make a lot of mistakes and still have money in there to trade and risk. Someone with a tiny account, I'm talking about under $5,000, they could blow up that account in one day or one week if they don't know what they're doing. Do you follow what I'm saying? So if you have a small account, you have to be very careful. But again, even if you have a big account, you still want to have more winners than losers. So results count and you've got to see them. So open up your mind today to learn something new. We are going to talk about charts. We're going to talk about gaps. I'm going to go back and forth between uh, the chart. We'll see where we close today in the market. We can talk about that. I think the other thing too in reference to trading and one of the reasons that people struggle to make it is that um, they're back and forth trying to be a jack of all trades, trades and an expert in none. And so they really never completely, completely, completely uh, fully get ingrained in one particular strategy where they're so, 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 so good at it that they can have a lot of wins. Because when you're trying to do this thing and trying to do that thing, it's like if you were, uh, uh, the Olympics was coming up. I don't know if I'm going to watch it because it's in China and it's like so far away, different time zones. So everything's going to be really screwy with the time zones. But as far as Olympic sports go, you, you wouldn't want to be a skater and a skier and a snowboarder. It's like you would be impossible to be good at all those sports at the same time or very difficult, you know kind of like with trading. I think what people do is they say, well, they want to go long, they want to short, they want to do, um, you know, this strategy, that strategy. They want to do too many things all over the place and then they never get really good at anything, you know. So think of yourself like an athlete that you're trying to make it into the Olympics. And if you have that type of focus, a pinpoint of focus like a bullseye, I think you're going to do a lot better. And again, I even do that to the point of really only doing one trade or two trades a day. Now, to, and today we ended up doing more because the opportunity was there, but usually I'm very, very, very pinpointed with what we do, trying to hit the bullseye every day and get it right. Because again, it is about having the winners, not the losers, okay? So again, if you're one of these people, and I know some of you are because I've seen you. I've seen some of these people in many, many webinars that I've done and some of you are trading, if you're not getting the results, you have to stop what you're doing. You cannot continue to do the same actions over and over and expect the same results. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. So change is required. It's actually necessary that you change if you want something different. Um, and if you want to be more successful in the market and in life, then you have to learn a trading system that will bring about the financial results you've been looking for. Change what you're doing and the sooner the better. It's kind of like if you look at what's happening in the world right now. Now, particularly in my circumstance, I live in New York City. New York City is a mess right now. And it's actually been a mess for now going on two years. Nothing is going to change in this city unless the people that are in charge, the leadership, change what, what is happening in New York or people that are residents here vote in new leadership. So the fact is, again, things only change when you take necessary steps to bring about a different outcome. And so it, it is up to you in your own life, in your own personal space, when you sit down in front of your charts, if you're trading, open up the platform to do something different. If you want a different result, you can't keep doing the same thing if it doesn't work. Now, for me, I do focus on the same thing every day because what I do does work. Okay, and because over the number of years that I've been training, over the number of years I've had the business and I've been teaching people, I've actually gotten better. Okay, 
We have not had any losing trades in the live trading room so far this year at all. Now, it's only been, you know, two weeks or two and a half weeks into the year, but still that is phenomenal and everyone is doing extremely well so far this year. It is up to me to be very, very focused when I get up. But again, the idea is just like an athlete that you would get better over time, better, 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 make more money. And I think with traders is what happens, they end up losing over time, do not stay focused, and then they get extremely frustrated. They get frustrated that they're losing, they get frustrated they've been doing it for a long time, put a lot of energy into it, they get frustrated they've taken classes and haven't learned how to train, and then they consequently do not wanna take other classes or do other things because they're so frustrated that they're not doing well. And they end up going down the hill instead of up the hill. You're supposed to be going up the hill where you get to the top, and the top of the hill is what? Is success. Okay, so one of the cornerstones to everlasting trading success is consistency. Just like I said before, more winners. Got to have more winners than losers. Now, in the past, you would have had to pay all kinds of fees with brokers. Brokers have really eased up on fees the last few years as the as the industry itself has has become smaller and smaller and smaller. So there are still fees associated with trading, but nowhere near what they used to be years ago when I started out, actually. But you have to be consistent. And without any of this, it's hard to stay in the market for any length of time. And if you've been trading, you know this. You may have opened up an account, then you have to refund it, then you blow it up, then you gotta take a break, then you gotta go back, then you open up another account. It gets very frustrating and it's mentally and emotionally and financially exhausting. So in order to be consistent, a person needs proper focus on what counts, okay? So if you've been dreaming of being successful in the market for years, but the success has eluded you, stop and consider why. Is it something that you are doing yourself, like where you have discipline issues, or is it nothing to do with you? And it's just the strategy you're using doesn't work. Either it loses or you make money, but you don't make enough. Okay, you don't have enough profits, big enough profits to cover the days when there are trades that don't work and you lose. So you've got to think about, this is a good time of the year too, January, January, the beginning of the year to elevate yourself to a new trading level. And this requires really a deeper understanding and a better comprehension and overall wider perspective of what makes individual success possible for a trader or investor in the stock market. So again, making over $250,000 a year is not impossible. It is absolutely not. And I'm using that number as a guide because many people can pay their bills and consider that earning a living if they can make around this. But you know, this is outside of New York City or expensive uh, places in the, in the, in the world. The reality is that many people aren't even making a thousand dollars a week, <laughs> you know, let alone five. It's it's that they they just give back their winnings and losses, and they have too many losses. So you see how it can very easily build when you are become successful, and then you get excited and you do well. But it has to have the foundation of the good system, and then you have the sizing that's on top of it as well. What type of account do you need to make that kind of money? Well, let's talk about what type of trading you wanna do. We're gonna to talk today about day trades and we're gonna to talk today about options trades. Options trades, you can open up an account with any broker as a non-margin account. With a day trading account, you're gonna need a margin account. Different brokers have different requirements for the type of cash you need for those types of accounts. So first, you have to decide if you wanna do options or second, you have to decide if you wanna do day trades, which is on RHR margin. Okay, so that's first. My strategy on gaps, I do both, you can do both, and you can use my strategy for both. So I have a live trading room and I have an options newsletter. So first you have to decide which one you wanna do. Okay, so that's first. Then you see how much cash you have in order to open up that account. So as far as the risk goes, I would be looking for one to one. So for example, say you wanted to make $1,000, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on average, five grand a week. Again, some days we may not have any trades. Some days we may do two trades like today. Same, some days you may earn more than one amount, but I would go one to one on average. So if you'd be taking an option, you're looking for what? 100% return on investment. If you're taking a day trade, you're looking for what? It's called a risk to reward of one to one. If you'd be looking to risk a thousand, you're looking to make a thousand. So I'd say a thousand dollars is a good risk to reward average for option or day trade to look to turn it over if you wanna make five grand a week. Does that make sense? So on average, so figure if you're gonna do one trade a day and there is 20 trades, uh, 20 trading days on average in a month, 
you're going to need at least a ten to twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand dollar account in order to do that. Okay, so if you're really good, you could have ten grand in an account and do it. If you're brand new, I'd say you need about twenty. Give yourself a thousand dollars a day. Makes sense. So. I hope that answers your question, but we will talk about options and we will talk about day trades, okay? Good questions here, just you can keep asking me them as I'm talking, I'm seeing the chat. So anyways, let's talk about institutional money. Becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. So this is pretty much how I make my picks. I'm looking at the gap every morning and I'm gonna show you what a gap is in a minute in a chart. But I'm looking for institutional money in the gap. Are they buying the gap or are they selling the gap? Okay, so that's how I make the decision. I make the decision based on something called technical analysis, but it's advanced technical analysis. So if you want to trade with me, you need what? You need charts. You need to set up a day chart. Again, you get all of this with the broker when you open the account. This doesn't matter if you have an options account or a day trade account. You get live active charts wherever, whatever type of account you open, you can set them up. And you can set them up looking pretty much like mine if you want to. So you can go anywhere and get day charts. So I'm looking at the price action in the chart and then I'm looking at the gap, but I'm trying to predict where the big money, the institutional money is gonna take the stock. Are they gonna drive it down? Are they gonna push it up? So that is all what I'm doing, okay? Now if you take the class with me, you'll learn how I do it. I have small classes, I have a large class, I have the trading room and I have the options newsletter. So it depends if you wanna learn or just trade. But complementing how to redefine and train with this power, which again is the institutional power, is gonna have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Now, what happened today in the market? The market sold off. So what did we do today? We shorted. So there was selling in the market. So we shorted and we did puts and they worked, okay? And we did them very early in the morning, very early in the morning. So it didn't matter where you got out, everybody made money because we got the direction right. And that's another big thing too. If you wanna make money trading, you gotta get the direction right. If something rallies and you short it, you're gonna lose. If something drops and you go long it, you're gonna to lose too, okay? If you don't get the direction right, that's gonna be a problem. So again, you have to have more wins and losers, but that means really getting the direction right more than you do not, okay? So elevate yourself, your trading, your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. Now, let me just pull up the chart here. I have to take this off for a minute here to plot this on quickly just to show you today. So here's today. Can you see it? <coughs> We're pretty much flat here tonight, up a little bit. Can everybody see a chart of the SPY? Let me know. Hello, <coughs> is anyone there? I have the spy up. Can you people see it? So I said, I look for the gap. Let's talk about what a gap is first. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Here the market closed on this particular day at 450.498. And the next day it opened where? 458.61. It gapped up. You could have bought the market this day. If you did, you made money. And that was 12.21. We didn't do that. That was the week of Christmas. I took off that week. But anyways, theoretically, you could have gone long here. What happened over here? Market closed at 466.45. Boom. Opened down in the morning, 461.55. So if you shorted the market here, guess what? You made money. Okay. So anyways, there are gap downs, there are gap ups. Now, can you short every gap down? No. For example, last week, the market closed here on Thursday at 464.53 and gap down and opened down Friday at 461.19. If you shorted the market Friday, for example, as a day trade, you would have lost. So this is a gap down where here you could not have shorted and made money on that particular day. Are you with me? Now this over here on Thursday was a gap up. And if you went long, you lost. It fell this day. Market closed here, 471.02 and gapped up and opened at 472.19.
So I've devised a whole method, which is my process that I do in the morning, the pre-market that allows me to predict what is going to happen here. So I'm looking at this even before this occurs. Let me just get rid of this here. See if I can just get rid of today. No, I can't get rid of today without getting rid of crap. Well, I, I can't get rid of, I just, I don't want to show you today, but I lose Friday too. Sorry about that. But anyways, here's Thursday. The Friday was here and then you don't see today. So I got up in the morning and saw where the market was in the pre-market and predicted that we would fall today and I was right, okay? So I have an options newsletter which I sent the trades out in the morning, early in the pre-market. You don't do the trades till the open and then if you're in the live room, you get the trade and we did it and we did short this market today. So I predicted that what would happen, we would fall, which means, let me blow this up again, selling. And again, you went shorting today because we were red. Okay, we fell. Everybody with me? I see some people signing in here late. Let me go back to the slide. So I'm reading the footprints of institutional money and in what? In that gap, that specific gap, which is the close, the difference between the close and the open, which I see early in the morning. Or I can look at it at night. I prefer to do my work in the morning, but you can look at it at night. So we're up tonight, we are gapping up tonight a little tiny bit, but we are up, okay? So this is what I do. I do not trade the pre-market, I do not trade the post-market, but I'm reading what the institutional money is doing in that time period, okay? So now this was a chart of the QQQs. Again, this was back the whole month of December, beginning of this year. The market was sideways for quite a bit of time, okay? You could have bought at certain days. You could have shorted at certain days. We've captured a lot of the moves that were happening here in this market where we got momentum, which also counts for profit. So somebody was saying, well, what account size do you need to make this kind of money? Listen, you get good moves and you get big moves and things. You can very easily make larger than 100% return on investment or larger than one to one in a day trade. You, you don't know until you're in the trade and you see how it's going. So again, I have targets in the options newsletter. And if you're in the live room, I'm giving you the targets in the room. But it's the objective and the point to have realistic expectations when you're taking the trades overall. But there are many days when we can get bigger moves than that. And one of the nice things going back to what I was saying is about the fact that earnings season started on Friday is when earnings season starts, you have stocks that move big. So there's, there's quarterly earnings. Companies like today, Goldman Sachs, they report their earnings. They say what their expectation of their outlook for growth is, and they give all this information, and then the stock has a move. That could be a bullish move, it could be a bearish move, but I'm looking for that when I'm watching it, and then I'm looking to see how it reacts. So Goldman Gap down today, it very easily could have been bought in the gap down, it wasn't, okay? But the fact is when you're looking at things to get the direction right, you've gotta get the momentum, the direction, and all of these things to happen within the time frame that you want. And this does, goes the same for options or day trades. Because if I'm in a day trade, I'm going to get in and out quick. I'm trying to get in and out in the first half hour of the day. In an option, I may give it a little bit more time because I'm doing the weeklies. So I have a little bit more time. But I still have to get the move within the week that I take the trade. Okay. Now, this was the cues. Let's just look at this first, what the trade was. 394 puts. A put is a short. I sent out on January 5th, which expired 114. So 394. So what day was that? What did I say? January 5th. Here. Everybody with me? So this closed here, this gap down. So it was a little bit above the strike. Take it to the right, see where we were. Time I sent this out was 1036 in the morning. And you can see where this went, fell off a cliff, actually kept falling. This was a really nice move, okay? So if you want to do options, you take the trade, when do you get it? So the cost was $4.50 for one contract. Now this is an advanced trader risk. So in, in this, advanced trader risk is so much more than the profits would be way more than what we're talking about here for a thousand average a trade. But if you wanted to risk $1,000 to be consistent with that risk, okay, 
you would take how many? Well, you could take two. Two would be what? $900. If you took 20, the risk was 9,000. And if you have the account to do it, you can do it. So sold at 22, profit 35,000. This is a 389% return in investment. So you see here, your goal is 100. You know, your goal is to get the move. I call it the money move. But sometimes things are going in your favor. You don't have to kill a trade. Now, if you can't watch it, <coughs> what I would suggest is you put the order in, you buy it, and then you put an immediate sell order. And you could have put a sell order, for example, here at nine and just got out at nine. Because if you can't watch it, if you can't see the market's falling off a cliff and you're in a meeting or something, then you don't want to miss the exit on something. <coughs> so that was back at the first week of January this year. So again, in order to do options, you don't need a margin account. You can open up a cash account. But if you want to set up an options account as a margin account, you can too. It's still only the cost that you're paying. And I think people that have small accounts, options work better for them because you can have explosive moves like this with very low cost. Because at the end of the day, you could have taken one contract in this and whether and, and only risked $450 and still made 389% return in investment. And so that that is very profitable and particularly for someone that has a small account and again you have a fixed risk when you take an option why because you cannot lose more than the amount of the contracts with the cost in this case here if you had the ability to risk nine thousand you couldn't have lost any more than that even if the market would have rallied and made a new high it did not but that's all you would have lost okay so i don't kill trades in the middle of them like i just let them be and go and work so that's what I do. But if you want to kill them, if they're down the first day I call them, that's up to you. For me, I'm looking for the follow through and the commitment of the institutional money to come in. And while I brought up that chart previously of the market, I will tell you that I did call two market trades on Friday that were down into the close Friday. And if you held them over the weekend, those trades were up this morning and worked. So sometimes I do an options trade that does take a couple of days. With the day trades, we don't have the flexibility. We've got to be in and out quick. Now, the nice thing about day trading is, again, you could have shorted the market on that particular day, this day back in January 5th, the key is when it fell. The idea of day trades is, it is making fast money, in, out, boom, 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 okay? You have to be in the trading room for that. You've got to be available to take the trade though between 9.30 and 10 a.m., and you have to be in the room to get the call live. Either way, I'm looking for the movement, the momentum, the volume. Again, this could be selling, this could be buying. It could be whichever direction we're happy to play it. Because it's earnings season right now, we will be going long and we will be doing shorts, okay? So commitment has a plan of action. When big money, getting back to what I was saying a couple of slides ago, when institutional money comes in, it doesn't just come in and then disappear. Do you know what I'm saying? So again, places that invest in stocks make decisions based on lots of information, research reports, research in general, all kinds of things that we are not privy to. And by the way, to buy a research report, the ones that a company like Goldman Sachs would buy cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. We are not privy to that information and it makes no sense to even think or consider that information because by the time we see a stock, and we see the gap and we see the move and we see the market, we don't even have enough time to process that type of level of information. We've got to make a decision right now to debt. If you wanted to short the market today, you had to take it, get in, get out, okay? That's the type of thing. We are active, 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 active. That means in, out. And I still consider the way that we do options active, to be honest with you, because again, these are not trades where you're shorting a stock or buying a stock for weeks and months and years. If you know anything about options, you are paying for the longer time. You are paying more, 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 more. And it just doesn't make sense to pay for that more time. Because if something isn't going to go right now, well, then what the heck do I want to do it for? How do I know it's ever going to go? So I want to do it right now. You have to make money right now. That's the idea of being what is called an active trader. Okay. Any questions about that? Everybody with me so far? So that's also why I do the tighter time frame. Someone was asking about the options time frames too. 
But getting back to this conversation about institutional money, if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players, again, big traders, hedge funds, big money in the market, before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction, which is why we try to get in as early as we can, and then we get the move and we get out, okay? It's get the move, get out, take it, get out, chunk it out. But you have to understand how to trade with the side of the power, and the moves do happen fast. Now, personally, I love that. If you're not used to that, you have to learn how to do it, and you get used to it. And once you're used to it, it's fine. But the market definitely has the, the ability to pay you on many days because stocks do move that we trade. We do not do low float stocks. We don't do penny stocks. We don't do crap stocks. We don't do stocks that don't have a lot of volume. So everything that we do, you would be able to get in and out fast and quick and get as much size or as little size as you want. We are trading on the side of institutional money, and it's just that a lot of people don't know how to read it. But if you can learn how to read it, you're gonna become a successful trader, and you can win big trading on the side of the power. Again, I teach this in my large class, but if you just want to get the trades, you just sign up for the subscriptions, that's up to you. But this is something that I've really made a full-on career at it for myself because I developed this whole method to do this, and it, and it really works very well even for something like the market can be tricky. You know, I did not expect COVID. I think that was something that nobody expected back. We're going back now almost two years, March of 2020. But once you get into that, you know, process in the morning where you're rating something, you're looking at it and you're reading it and you're focused to do it, you don't think about all the other nonsense out there. You don't think about the news. You don't think about the websites. You don't think about uh, the noise, I guess it is. And you just focus on what's happening in the gap and you'll do well. And again, this is why you have to size yourself correctly. Because even though I said we have not had any losers so far this year in the day trading room, I, I mean, I would love to say a year from now, we didn't have any losers this year, but that's not realistic. So you have to take the amount of size that you're willing to risk and divide it up by the number of trades you wanna take per week. And that's how you have to break it down. But it, it, it is about the focus, really, for me. And I've just been extremely focused lately. And the moves have been there. And I expect they will continue to be there because for two reasons. One, earnings season started. And we normally get big moves in earnings season. And two, I do think that 2022 is going to be a very different year than 2021 for the market. We are where we are going to have the volatility. Volatility makes for good trading if you know how to, how to trade it. Okay? Any questions here so far? Take a sip of water. <coughs> Excuse me. So getting back to institutional money. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you are really reading the side of power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading because then it's very easy. Then it isn't hard at all. What people find hard is being able to determine what that direction is and to do it every day, to be honest. So again, the idea of making 250 grand a year or you know 30 grand in the trade, none of that is hard if you know what to do. Knowing what to do is what people find hard. That is part of the learning process. The learning process is something that some people are interested in but then there are people that have no interest in the learning process and all they want is the trade ideas. So I don't know which you know, side of the corner of the street that you stand on, but either way, it's the idea of being successful and doing something that results in success for yourself that you can actually reap the, the rewards to doing this. Now here was the market and the SPY. So we looked at the QQQs earlier, this is the SPY. This was back Thursday where we had the drop off here. I showed you that big chart. We had the market up from today's drop. On January 6th, which was the day after that fifth call, um, I called the 466 puts in the SPY, which expired on the 14th. This was one of those days, and I'll show you this, where you could have held this until the very last day. I don't think people should do that, but it's, if they're up in the trade, I mean. But this was one of these ones where this trade worked so well, you could have done that. So the cost for this one was 450. 20 contracts would have been a risk of 9,000, sold at 950, profit of 10,000. This is a normal trade, return on investment 111%. But what happened with this? January 6, 466. Here. Let me see where we are. 456 is here. Okay. This fell all the way down here. 
but actually from 466, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to pull up Friday. Hold on. I don't have Friday's day in there. Can you see me? I see the chart. Here was the day I called it. This is the drop in here. But look at where this went. And again, I'm not saying that you would have wanted to do this, and I did not do this, but I'm just showing you. This was Friday on the expiration date. Look at that, that's ridiculous. It opened at 461, low was 459. That was still a profitable trade on Friday, the expiration date. But again, I look at everything, take it, get in, get out. Take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it. But I mean, this just shows you really where my eye has been directed so far this year. So even if you screwed this up, you couldn't have screwed it up, to be honest with you. But again, you really need to take profits in trades when you're up, especially something where you're up 100% like that. Let me just get back to the, the thing. Okay, what was I saying? We were talking about, oh, we were talking about this trade here. So I showed you the chart. So this is just like a normal trade. Again, the Qs had a bigger drop, had a bigger move. So that was a larger return on investment, okay? <clears throat> and again, I see some people coming in late. You can always plot me questions in the room. But in order to become successful in the market, you have to become a specialist. So what am I a specialist in? Gaps. That, the gaps, when I read them, tells me everything I need to know about what institutional money is doing so that I know if something's going to rally or drop. And if I know that, then I know whether to go long or to short. And again, I'm always looking for the momentum. I'm always looking for the power of money. That goes without saying, okay? And again, that's why you're getting some of these ones that have these massive high percentage return on investment outcomes because that's what momentum is. I mean, that's what the market has to offer people that know how to trade. But again, you can, you, can, you can learn how to do it and apply it, or you can just get the trade calls. This is something that, again, what side of the corner of the street are you on? I don't know. For me, it was important to understand the methodology. Why was I doing it? And the study, it's always been important to me because I'm a very brain-oriented person. Obviously, I developed this system myself but it really pinpoints institutional direction. The strategy sets up daily, and again, what is the strategy? It's called the golden gap. How does it work? I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. So I'm focusing on one thing. Today I focused on what? Goldman Sachs. We shorted it. I also focused on the market today. Why? Because I knew the financials would go and move with the spy. So once I rated Goldman and I knew that Goldman was gonna fall, well then I knew the spy would too. Okay, actually here is this, here is this actually. Um, so here was today, down here's the volume. So here was Friday, stock closed, boom. Mm. There it is, get the drop. So this was Friday, this was today, we shorted this, okay? And we did a put in it. So we did an option in this and a day trade actually. So if you happen to want to be in the day trade room and do options, and I call the same stock and the same ticker symbol and the same day, you know I really, really, really love it and those are the ones you don't wanna miss, okay? So you see how this was really had basically selling, okay? Not sure the exact low of the day here, but it, it, it really sold off hard. Broke 350, just went. Now, one of the other ones we did that was a big winner for this year so far alone was Netflix. Again, the focus on one strategy, which is gaps, and we did this as a day trade. So, and, and actually, let me pull this up, then a bigger chart. Entry was 558.85. Now, this is expensive. This is expensive. We did puts in this, but we also did this as a day trade. I know it's expensive. Do, if you can do 100 shares, do 100 shares, because this is on margin. 500 shares was a risk of 3225, and this stock can move a lot. 547.65, profit was 5,600. So this was a very, very, actually, let me see if I can pull this up. Let me just go back to my chart here a second for that day. So this is a day trade. So we've been talking about options. This was a day trade. 
pull up the baby chart. There. Again, I'm just trying to blow this up. This is a one minute. Get this up. See it. So here's the whole thing, actually, from one six, then the follow through drop one seven. Again, this is a one minute. So I'll go back to the slide in a minute where you can see. So this would have been a day trade that we did in the live room on margin where I call the entry, then I call the stop, then I call and I say get out, and then you get out if you want to get out there, or if you want to hold it, you can hold it. But this is showing you 1617 just to see where the stock dropped and fell. And again, we did do puts in this too in options. This was another one where if, if you're in the room and you're in the options letter and I called two things on the same day, you would absolutely want to, to do it. Let me go back to this slide. So this is something where you would assess your risk. And again, this was a big stop for this. Okay, this was a large stop for this, but it paid. Why? The stock dropped more than $10. That's a big move for Netflix, okay? But you could have made $5,600 just doing a trade in and out really quick in Netflix, and you could have done in options too. But I'm usually not in options in, you know, five, 10 minutes, in and out in five, 10 minutes. So this was a trade you would have needed a margin account. So you get margin from a broker. You get four to one margin from a retail broker. If you go to a prop broker, you will get 10 to one margin. So again, you don't need the full cash equivalent of a $550 stock in order to, to short this. And again, this is a short, it's a short, okay? Whether we go long or whether we go short as day trades, we're always doing them a margin, okay? Anyways, here was the, this doesn't, I don't have today's trades in here, but this is where we are here today. This is in the trading room. This isn't the options trades. Yeah, there's the one six was Netflix. We were closed on the third. We did Foot Locker. I was up in that. I messed up that exit. I got out break even. No trades the fifth. Netflix was a winner. Spy was a big winner on the seventh. Q's was a winner on the tenth. No trades the eleventh. Apple was a break even the twelfth. Netflix we did again on the thirteenth. Facebook, JPM was Friday, and today we did Spy and Goldman Sachs, and they both worked. So again, the focus. You know, again. It's more winners than losers. I, I hope as long as I'm on this hot streak, it stays. I said in the room this morning, I was joking about it. I should start dousing myself with holy water because, <laughs> because everything I do is right right now. I have the golden touch, but you know, you still have to you still have to size yourself correctly for the trades. Any questions here so far? So this was another one. This was the one we did on the seventh. Again, this was a day train. So let's look at the seventh was here. Okay. So closed here, fell, boom. We did a short in this. You needed margin to do this, or you could have done a put. This was a short. We entered at 467.20. If you're in the room, I'm giving the numbers. The shares was 2,000, risk was 2,900. Again, if you're risking around 3,000, that's your assessed risk. Then we did an ad at 468.30, total shares 4,000, average price was 467.75, got the drop, boom. Why was this such a, a, a large monetary you know, profit of 10,200? 4,000 shares, that's a lot, specifically the market, and also the stock moved more than $2. So again, typically from doing something, whether it's the market, whether it's Apple, whether it's Netflix, whatever, I'm looking for a dollar, a couple of dollars. I'm looking for a move. Like I'm not doing something for 10, 20, 50 cents. Unless it's like Foot Locker, I might do for 50 cents. It's a lower price stock, but we're looking for usually a dollar or more or several dollars depending on my risk. 
So if I'm risking $2, I want to make $2. Again, if I'm risking a dollar, I want to make a dollar. Similar to what we were talking about with the options trades. If you're risking $4.50, you're trying to make what? $4.50, okay? The day trades were in and out quick between 9.30 and 10. We might be done at, at I mean, Friday, we did JPM. We were done, the room was closed, like, I think at 9.45. I mean, I closed the room before 10 o'clock Friday. So I we, we could be done in... 15 minutes, five. So, but but that's the day trades. We are in and out very fast in the day trades. And as far as the, the options go, you have to give them time for the momentum to come in. So if the momentum comes in like a whopper in the first 30 minutes, though, I'm probably not gonna get out of that. I'm probably gonna give it a chance to keep going. If I take a trade on a Monday, it doesn't expire to Friday, and I get a big move you know, in the first half an hour, well, I think that I'm gonna let that sucker run. You know, but you could get out of it theoretically if you did an option that fast if you wanted to as well. I think there are people that are doing that, um, you know, that are on the letter, but that's that's your personality. But the day trades, the day trades on margin were in and out fast. The answer is yes. Okay. So the focus is on one system, a quality system. This is what I'm looking every single day. And again, shorting is what I mostly do. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm never going to go long again. It doesn't mean I don't go long. I do. But I am very focused on shorting. I am very good at shorting. And I've really been focused on shorting the whole time I've ever started to trade because you get big moves with shorts and you get fast moves. And I do like that. And it's because it's panic. So panic comes in quick. You saw that in the market today. You saw that in Goldman Sachs today. So we will go long. We went long Tesla and Apple so far this year. Uh, those are the only things I can think of that we went long so far off the top of my head. But the fact is, you know, we've been doing shorts and they've been working. Now, again, I may go long tomorrow morning. There's some very significant earnings out uh, tomorrow morning and this week. I may go long them. I don't know until I see the gap and read it. But the fact is that I do think shorting is exciting. The moves happen big and quick and fast. And I do think that shorting gives me an edge because a lot of people that trade the market do not know how to short. So how do I find which gap to trade? I get up in the morning, I rate the gap using my 26 point rating system. It is a strategy that I do and I teach in a class on it usually around once a month. So I actually do not have a class this month in January for the golden gap system. The next class isn't until next month. The class I'm doing this month is the options course, which I'll talk about at the end. So if you're interested in the golden gap class, email me and I will email you what the next date is. But this is the two-day course that I teach the rating system in. It's a 14-hour course where I talk about gaps and how I pick them. But again, let's just review here. This is very basic. What is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. Simple. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Again, simple. Guess what? How many things gap in every single day? Almost everything. It's very rare that the market would close at, you know, 455.52 and open tomorrow at 455.52. So, I mean, most everything gaps on any one given day, but not everything gaps in a way that's predictable, that you can predict the direction that it's gonna go that day. So that is the key. That is the key for me. That is the key, is looking for what I called golden gaps, which is anything that rates 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system. How do I determine the points? I look at a daily chart and I go through them, and this is what you learn in the course but it spots institutional money. So again, going back to the philosophy, why does it work? How can I see the market is going to fall or Goldman or whatever we do? It's because of the fact that I'm seeing that the power money is coming in and is moving it. It can move it up, it can move it down, but we gotta be with it or we're not gonna make money. And we have to be with it if we wanna get, you know, 300% return on investment. There's just no way to get that, to have these kinds of risk to rewards unless you're with the big money. It's just never, ever going to happen. You're going to have to take 50,000 shares of something and it's way too much risk and it's just absurd to do that and it's just way too risky and that's one of the reasons I don't do low float cheap stuff too. It's crap and you know, you just, you're taking too much size with too much risk on that doesn't make any sense. You want to be in and out, very nimble, a couple thousand shares, boom, ba doop ba doom, and you're in and you're out and you make a couple thousand dollars and you're done. And again, the options, you can put size on your options because you can't go over that anyways with the risk. So you can plop on the size with options because if the stock wiggles and jiggles and moves, you will never lose more in an option than your total, total risk of the cost of the contract, okay? 
but you still got to trade stuff that moves and you still have to trade stuff that has volume in the options. Okay. So how do you find golden gaps? Again, the rating system. This is the meat and potatoes of what I do. It's what I teach in the class. I find the gaps and I rate them and I use a checklist. That's what you'd come if you wanted to learn the system from me. They have to be qualified and the checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. Gaps are such a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook them. They don't understand them. They don't know how significant they are. They make the trend. They set the trend. They continue the trend in stocks and the market. They overall tell you everything you need to know. And again, you cannot go long every bullish gap or short every bearish gap. Friday was a good uh, indication of that. And many days the market has had. It markets gapped up, made new highs, sold off. Again, the market can be tricky, but if you get it right, it can be so profitable. So it's about learning it, doing it, understanding it, and gaps set the trend because they're a definitive and demonstrative change and show a price in what is called an event. And this is the power, the power to understanding really gaps. So it's technical analysis that I do, but it's advanced technical analysis in the gap. Gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or in fact change the trend. And if you follow the gap, you'll be following the power of money. Again, a lot of people just don't understand gaps, though, or they read them wrong. And you can get hurt if you're doing the wrong thing, quite frankly. Today in Goldman, if you went long, you could have gotten hurt, okay? So it is important to know what to do. It is important to size yourself right. It is important to use stops, okay? So there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock. It's money. And it's not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction, and it is at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. And as much as people complain about certain things like that, hedge funds and this and that in the market, that's what makes it possible for you and I to trade and make huge profits because they're moving stocks, and they have all the volume and the money to move them. We do not. Everybody, if we went all together in the trading room and did everything at the exact price in the exact second, we still wouldn't move it, okay? We have to be in stuff that's really going with this big, 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 big money. So gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. And one of the reasons earnings season is a great time to trade, which again started Friday, is because you get more gaps in earnings season than non earnings season. And you get usually good gaps. But some gaps are nothing gaps. Again, there were some days this year where we didn't do any trades. If I get up in the morning and I rate the gaps and there isn't anything that rates well, there isn't any good ones, we don't do anything. But that's okay. That's better than losing. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you will know when the power of money will flow to pay you. So it's all about the 26-point checklist. This is what I teach in my Golden Gap course. Again, I am not doing this class this month in January. If you are interested in this class, email me. I will let you know the dates. So we will talk about the things if you want to join that you can sign up for here uh, this week. But it's all about the profits. It's all about power of money. Just think about it. Think about what I said earlier when I started the lecture. You have to have our winners and losers. I know this seems so basic. It seems so basic. But a lot of people just don't, it doesn't register with them. And I don't know if it's because they've been trading for so long that they and they're losing that they just, it doesn't register. But you can't get up every single day and never change what you're doing and expect a different outcome. You just can't. Again, New York City is a good example. Nothing is going to change here until the leadership makes different decisions or we get new leadership. And unfortunately, you know, I don't know when that's going to be in New York. So it's a sad situation. The, it is up to you to be the person that drives the car in your own life. And again, it is totally possible for you to do well trading in the market and you just have to be focused. Any questions here from anybody? Just a couple nice testimonials from people. Julie was the one that just sent me that email today because she just joined the newsletter. She's already, every trade is a winner and she's she thinks she's gonna pay for the, the price of the newsletter in two weeks. If she does, she does. Either way, she's doing well. So again, the focus, the picks, doing the right thing, focusing on the right information, which is what I do. So I get up, I'm rating the gap. I'm looking at it, I'm analyzing it, I'm reading the price action. You know, that is what I do very well. Okay, so you can come and you can learn from me or you just get the picks. But I'm seeing where the power money positions are getting in. 
And it is like finding a gold mine because seeing gaps clearly and how they're creating trends and changing trends and making momentum is a very powerful way to train. It's powerful, it's profitable. They do move fast. I personally like that, okay? And we do get that often. And the days that we don't, well, you just go on with your day. You don't have any trains that day, okay? It's the idea, again, of like if you were getting married, you marry one person, you fall in love with one person, you don't marry 10 people, okay? It's like you need just one good one and you've got to have conviction in it. And once you do, it, I think it's very easy to press the button. So, I, you know, for people, sometimes they need the class to, to have the conviction and understand it. If you just want the trades, that's your decision too. Sometimes, you know, people don't have time um, to do classes and they just want to trade and they just join the subscription. Sometimes people want the information, they want the knowledge. You know, I think all of it is a process. And if you're on the newsletter, you're going to learn as you go anyways. And I'm here if you want to ask questions too. But you need conviction in order to make money. It's, it's essential. You can trade for a living, whether it's options or day trades or both. Personally, I like to do both. I like to do both because I get the overnight moves and the options, which you get big, big moves that you can't get with day trading. And I do like the day trades because I know where I am by the end of the day, every single day. I like that feeling to feel like, you know, like my day is closed out and I can get very fast moves also. And I can be very nimble in day trades. So for me, it's there's there's pluses and minuses to both, but I happen to like both. But either one you can do from home. So if you want to learn how to do this, then you would take the class. The class is called the Golden Gap. You will learn the 26 point rating system. I'm looking for 20 points or more. You trade the gap in the direction of the gap. When do you take the trades? Early in the morning, between 9.30 and 10 a.m. You're in, you're out. And again, this is a system that I use for day trades or options. If you're taking options and you want the bigger moves, then you're holding them for a bigger move. Or like I said, if you want to get out of them quick, you can do that too. You can do that too. Okay, like Julie's a good example. She's brand new. I think she's getting out very fast because she's new. She's, you know, this is all brand new to her. She's happy she's up. She just gets out when she's up. So that's okay. It's whatever works for you. But you have to have a structure in place. You have to have a structure in place to make money. And again, part of that is assessing what your risk is going to be, how many trades you're going to do a week, all of these things. So if you want to learn the class, it is a 26-point checklist. This is a strategy. It measures gaps by writing them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have Number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big move in the day, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, precise entries with follow through, and a good risk reward target potential, which is important. And it's important whether you're doing options, it's important whether you're doing day trades, everything that you do, you need a money management plan. How much are you risking per trade? You need to know how many trades you're gonna do each day and how many you're gonna do a week. You need to know are you going to get out of every trade at the target? Are you going to get out of every trade at 100%? Are you just going to put a sell order even at 50%? Again, you could get out faster if you want. It's the idea of having winners and consistency. And part of it is your risk, okay? And if you have a small account, that is okay. I think a lot of people are starry out and they want to have big risks. And I've been putting more in the marketing materials about lower risks my assistant did not do that in this webinar, so I'll have to talk to him about it. But I've been doing it in the email marketing. You can take a small risk and you can build up a small account. I have seen people do it and people that are with me that have done it. So the reality is you may not be able to do an Amazon. If one Amazon contract costs $5,000, that's okay. You can take a small account and build it up. There's you know, no reason to wait and not trade or do things that aren't working or sit on the sidelines when you could be active and doing it and grow a small account. So it, it's it's just one of these things we all want X, Y, Z. We all want to be in a different place. We all want this, this, that. We want everything yesterday. We have to take the life that we have right now and take the money that we have and make it work for us in a positive and beneficial way. And we have to be realistic, okay? And so that's just what it is. But it's about jumping in and diving in and doing it. So make 2022 your best year yet. You can believe in yourself and I'm here to help you. So. Let's talk about the upcoming course. I'm going to do the Gap Options course, which is next week. It's Thursday, January 27th. There's no prerequisites for this class. It's 11 to 3 Eastern time. It includes one month free of the Gap Options newsletter. The cost of the class is $2,500. So this is a Thursday. This is during the week. It's a half-day course. It does include one month of the newsletter, 
I do not have a monthly subscription to the newsletter. So this is probably the lowest price cost to get you into the newsletter if you're interested in this and then you get the class for the half day class. If you're interested in signing up for this, email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. If you're interested in the big class, the Golden Gap course, that is $6,999. That is on the website. I do not have the next date for that class yet. If you're interested in that, email me if that you're interested and I will update you on the date of that class when I have it. It, was, it will not be January, okay? My schedule is too booked for January. If you want to sign up for the Gap Options newsletter subscription, I have two options for you. You would receive the newsletters in live time like we showed in the webinar. There were some of them here. The half annual is six months. It's $49.99 for six months of the letter. That's a lot of trades. 12 months is $69.99. It's a better value if you can afford it. 12 months from the time you sign up. So if you signed up today, you'd be into January of 2023. If you're interested in this, you sign up. You receive the trades tomorrow if you sign up tonight. It's either six months or 12 months. I do not have a monthly option and there are no trials for this, okay? Now, oh, go ahead, John has a question. I've been talking fast because I realize I'm going over the time, but we, we, we started late. So thank you for letting me go a little bit late, Kathy. No, the newsletter is separate. The newsletter is separate. You just get, the, get those to your emails. That's not the trading room. Now, the training room is separate. If you're interested in the trading room alone, okay, the trading room is for day trades. The trading room is not options, okay? This is not an options room. This is a day trading room. The cost of the day trading room is $69.99 a year for 12 months, 12 months subscription. And so this is a new product. If you want to sign up for the room, it's $69.99, which averages about $580 a month, but I don't have a monthly subscription for this if you're a non-student. So there are students in the room that are month to month, but they've taken the big class. So this is an option for you if you want to be in the room. It's $69.99. No monthly, no half annual. If you want options, you would sign up for the newsletter. So if you want to do options, sign up for the newsletter. Then you have the exact trade where you get it. If you want to do the, the, the day trades, you would sign up for the room. If you want to do the class and learn it, you sign up for the class. So it's whatever you want to do. Well, you can sign up for both. You can sign up for the options newsletter and you can sign up for the, the live room if you want. Now, some days we do different trades. Today, I talked about Goldman Sachs and the SPY. I did call day trades in the room in both those things, and I also did call options in both those things, and they worked. However, I did call other options. Today was an active day for the letter, which is why I got a bunch of nice emails today from people um, for the newsletter. But again, you have to decide how many trades you wanna take. If I call five trades in one day on the options newsletter I'm talking about, and you can't do all five, then you just do one or you just do two. In the room, we're usually doing one or maybe two, okay? But you can sign up for the room, John, and the letter, or you could sign up for the room alone, that's up to you. And again, if you're interested in the class, email me and I will give you the next class date. Any specific questions about anything here? If you're thinking about joining, I wouldn't wait. Just like Julie said, you know, she she's already almost made the annual subscription. I said, don't push it. Cause again, I don't I don't know what her risk is. I said you have the whole year. I mean, she's just so happy she's making money. You know, it's it's gonna be a busy time. I don't know what earnings are tomorrow morning. I usually don't look at stuff at night. I try to rest at night and then I look at things and I get up very early in the morning, I'm usually up by 5 36 o'clock in the morning, and then I look at everything. But this will be an active time for you to trade. So if you've been wanting to join, I would join. So you can get the benefit of being in the room or being on the newsletter and getting the calls during the busy season. Netflix is Thursday night. Thursday night, which is the 20th. That's another big one this week, except for I don't know what Netflix is going to do. So again, we're not in trades, and I'm not, I'm not predicting the move that stock's going to make on the earnings. That would be ludicrous, okay? I'm, I mean, I'm very good at what I do, but, you know, it's 
I, and Netflix could gap up and fall. It could gap up and rally. It could gap down and rally. It could gap down and fall. I don't know. But, but that is a big one this week. It is Thursday night. So I will rate that gap Thursday night or Friday morning and see if it's any good and see if we do something in it. But that is on the watch list this week. Yes, that's a big one. Like we had the banks today and Friday. The one of the two different types of margins and brokers, a retail broker, which there's a bazillion out there, you will get charts. Most of them are not even charging commissions anymore. And your margin will be four to one. You have to have a minimum of 25,000 if you want to be in, out, in, out, in, out, active and have a margin account, which means you'd have 100,000 in buying power, which is 25 times four. And that will allow you to take positions in stocks as day trades on margin, but you need 25,000 minimum. Or you can go to something called a proprietary day trading account. I can refer you to a place or there's tons of places like that too. If you've never heard of it, they will give you 10 to one. You also do not need 25,000 with that type of account. You could open up an account with them for, let's say, 5000 and they'll give you 10 to 1, so you'd have 50000 in buying power, 5000 in cash. But your, but your cash risk, forget the BP, forget the buying power, you have to say, okay, well, I have $5,000 cash. So even if I can take, you know, 5,000 shares of whatever, my risk should be this every trade, 500 or whatever you want to risk. You still have to consider your cash, even when you're getting that higher BP. Now that BP leverage, they call it, actually helps when we're doing stocks that are expensive or something like the market. So we did that, that, that day trade in the SPY and Netflix. So something like that where you get greater margin, that helps for those days when we're doing expensive stuff. We don't do expensive stuff like that all the time, just so you know. Now Goldman was like, you know, not cheap, but you know, we'll have plenty of things that are lower priced under $100 that we will be doing and that we do do, you know. How many options trades do I send at via the newsletter? It depends on how many I see. So that's what I mean. Today we did a lot. Because if I, if I read the market direction and I know in the morning that we're going to do something, then we will do trades with the market and the market itself. You follow me? Now, if there's a day where the market's gonna be blah, okay, then I'll focus on whatever specific stocks we're doing, whatever gaps those happen to be. Now, today we did Goldman. I would have done that anyways today. Even if we had nothing else to do, that was good and it worked. So it really depends how many good gaps we have, but that's how I am all the time anyways. So I might call 10 options trades on one day. I'm not doing 10 day trades, that's the difference. But then Tuesday, I'm just pretending, uh, say Monday I call 10 options trades. Tuesday I may call no options trades. Wednesday I may call no options trades. Thursday I may call five. So it's different, it's different. Whereas in the day trade run, I'm usually doing a day trade, one on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, one on Friday, do you follow what I mean? So that's, that's kind of, it's a little bit different as far as the activity level because I, you, I, I don't necessarily do a new options trade every day, but I may have days where I'm very active. If I see the market's gonna power trend up or power trend down, well, I'm not gonna ignore it. We're gonna play it. Do you know what I mean? So it could be a lot. It could be a lot in one day. It could be more than you even want to do, DB. So that's my point. That's my point. So, so that's why you have to say, okay, I have this much money. I'm going to risk this much. I'm going to do this many trades if she calls them or whatever, because you may not be able to do them all. And some people can't. Some people can't, but, it, but you do the ones you can. And you do the ones you can. So like I said, I gave the, uh, the uh, example of Amazon there are some options that are very expensive. We don't do them all the time, but sometimes we do. And if you have to have consistent risk, if I call Tesla and it costs $35 for one contract, if you're not risking $3,500 on every single trade that I call, you cannot do it because you're going to be all upside down. It's just going to be stupid. And then if that Tesla loses, then you're going to have to take four trades, winning trades to make up for Tesla. So you just can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Even though I know people have done it on the letter, 
I know people have done it and they've gotten lucky and the trades have worked. You can't be like that. Consistency means the wins. Consistency means booking the profits, not being piggy, okay? Consistency means not over trading, like you can't risk your whole account in one day. And consistency means picking a risk that you can live with. And I'm gonna go back to the market here. I'll say this one last thing and I'll take any other questions. I told you on Friday, I called puts. Well, if you, if you risked too much, you might not have held those trades. They were down by four o'clock. Those trades were down. They worked. So this is why you, you have to think, 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 think. Because if you're gonna risk $1,000 and plop it on and do two trades and you have two grand on and you're like, oh crap, 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 crap. And you kill it and then it goes on to work the next day. You're like, oh, then you're really like, that was crazy of me. Melissa was right. Because you'll kill it because you have too much risk on and you're gonna be worried and you'll be really worried about holding it through the weekend or a three day weekend. So you just, you have to come up with a risk where you're like, okay, I can, let this thing play out. You know what I mean? But that's up to you. And again, you can ask me. You can think about it. You can join the letter and start small. You can get a feel for it. If I call five trades one day, do one. You know? So I think you'll get in a groove once you're on the letter and you kind of see the way we're doing things. You'll get in a groove with it. And I do have targets in the letter. Sometimes things go bigger than we think though, you know? But this was this is a good a good example here where I'm sure somebody in the letter killed killed those trades. I'm sure somebody did. But if you held them through, you profited, which people there were people that did. But again, that's why you have to be thoughtful. This is a process and you're you're believing in it. And that's where, again, if, if you need the information and the knowledge to learn it, to take the class to believe in it, then, do, then sign up for the class. If you're like, I just want the trades, I want to make money, I'll do the class later after I see that this works or whatever, then, then do that. There are people that have signed up for the end newsletter and they're signed up for the room and they say, okay, fine, this is working. And then they do the class down the road. That's okay too. But this is a good time to trade because it's earning season. Let's just see here where, actually, just wanted to look where the diamonds closed today. And any other questions? I appreciate you staying, Kathy, thank you. Um, what else? So email me if you have questions, John. DB can email if you have questions. If you wanna trial for the room this week, you can email me. We have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I will offer you a trial to the room. There's no trials to the options newsletter, but I do have trials to the day trade room if you want. Again, the room is not for options. It is for day trades, just so you know. But if you want a trial, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com and, and I can send you a trial for the rest of the week. Here, I'll put in my, my email. Any other questions about anything? New people, old people? It's it's just about the focus. It's so interesting. Like I've even, like I was talking about in the room today. I mean, there's no one better than me when I'm focused, but I mean, I am a human being. So, you know, there's 365 days in the year and there's 200 some tour trading days in the year. I mean, I can be perfect. I can be. People that have been with me for a long time, they know that. It's it's staying centered. It's really staying centered. And I will tell you, I stopped. I stopped drinking alcohol. And I definitely think that that has helped too. Not that I'm never going to drink alcohol again. It's fun. But I mean, I am not drinking at all. And I'm getting good sleep. And I'm eating healthy. And I'm taking my vitamins. You know, having a, having a healthy brain rested, exercise, eating healthy. I never smoked. You know, all of these things really, really 
I think do make a difference. You will perform better. Again, think about it being an athlete. If you're an athlete, I mean, look at how much they work out, everything they do. So, you know, if you want to perform at your best, you really have to be at your best. Mind, body, all of it. It's true. It's true. All right, listen, have a wonderful night. Email me if you'd like a trial. Email me if you'd like to sign up for any of the subscriptions, the room, the options letter, the class. It's next Thursday. If you're interested in the big class, email me. Thank you for coming, everyone. Have a wonderful night. You're welcome.